on this joyous day, we bid you greeting this morning. A few points of instruction for you after our processional gospel is read. To work, if you would kindly let Nolan into the narthex first, and they will begin our procession for us as we begin with our processional hymn as we sing together, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Chapter beginning with the first verse. this, just say this, the Lord needs it, and it will send it back. It allowed... in his walk. Yeah. 
As we continue our processional movements into the church this morning, we want to give you a very warm welcome to St. James United Methodist Church on this day. We are glad that you are here on this joyous of days. Here in person or watching us online, we welcome you here today. And we pray that our worship together uh, prepares us fully for the week that lies ahead of us and uh, lies before us. As you will notice in your bulletins this morning, uh, we've got a number of announcements for you. We do not want you to forget, first and foremost, that there is lunch following church today. We want to make sure that you do indeed stay and enjoy lunch with us. There is egg hunt for the children this morning as well. So we do uh, pray and, uh, and hope that uh, you make sure that you uh, stay for, for that fellowship meal right after our service. Um, we also want you to know our Holy Week services that are coming up, Monday, Thursday service at Grove Hall UMC. Uh, we will be gathering at Grove Hall for our foot washing and communion service there, and then a Good Friday service at Centenary UMC. If you happen to need directions to either of those places, please do not hesitate to contact myself or our office, and we can provide that for you. Uh, Easter Sunday, March the 31st. Uh, we welcome you to join us for a wonderful and joyous Easter celebration with baptism, and we also uh, do want you to know uh, that on that day as well, there is, in place of Sunday school, there is Easter brunch from 9 to 9.45. We welcome you to uh, come and join. Uh, I should have invited you to sit down, too. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, we're all standing up still. You may be seated, please. My goodness. <laughs> My, my, my misstep there. I, I'm the only one who needs standing right now. So, so as I was saying, Easter brunch, uh, we welcome you to join us for that. Uh, so please, please do stay. Uh, and if you have occasion to do so, uh, please bring some fresh flowers with you so that we can uh, flower the cross out front in a joyous expression of our Easter joy. We also want you to know that the church office will be closed on Easter Monday, April the 1st. If you have any business with the church office, uh, please deal with us uh, before uh, or on Easter Sunday, but preferably before, because Easter Sunday, there's a lot going on, and Ginny and I, bless our hearts, we are liable to forget. <laughs> so email us, okay? We, we'd be grateful. Um, in addition to all of those announcements, I do want you to know that there is a sign-up sheet for a senior adult's trip to Cypress Gardens. Uh, if you happen to need any more information about that, please see, um, please see John Mansoff, and he can give you details, but I believe all the details are on that sheet in the narthex on one of the tables, you should be able to find it there. And we also want you to know that we have organized another hymn sing with our local uh, United Methodist churches in our area. We are hosting once again. Uh, that is happening on April the 14th at 6 p.m. right here. Uh, come with, uh, with uh, well, um, well-tuned voices and, and ready to go and uh, ready with your uh, particular hymn you enjoy in mind uh, to give out your request and uh, we, will, we will play it and we will sing it together and we will have a joyous time of fellowship. There will be a fellowship um, to share in our fellowship hall following that service as well. Once again, we welcome you this day to St. James United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here. Let us take a breath, let us quiet ourselves for this prayer of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people through Jesus. Amen. Held together in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God. We confess that we excuse ourselves from reaching out to those who need your care. We take your words that there will always be unmet needs as a reason not to try to meet the needs we can. Forgive us and help us to change. Renew our determination to live as faithful followers, faithful disciples, faithful Christians, Help us to work with you for the well-being of your creation, that the fortunes of all your people may be restored. 
Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Here is a flood of grace out of love for the whole world. God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Spend a word of time with one another to share signs of God's peace amongst yourselves. <laughs>
did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of God for the people of God. God. As we continue on with our worship service this morning, uh, you will note that uh, in place of the sermon, we will be listening to the passion narrative of the Lord. There are instructions in your, in your bulletin for that, but at this time, uh, we are going to invite, uh, since we do not have a gospel reading aside from our passion narrative, we are going to invite uh, Miss Nancy and any of our children who are oh, with Lord, us this morning for our children's moment. We welcome you to the front to hear what Miss Nancy has prepared for you this morning. Come on down, everybody. Good morning. So, have any of you been to a parade before? Yeah, a parade. Well, that's what my next question was. What kind of parades are there? What's the reason to have a parade? St. Patrick's Day, yep. Anybody else? Christmas. Yep. Anybody else think of one? Pat Parker. Yep. Anybody else think of another reason for a parade? What about Fourth of July? That, yeah, that's a good time. What about when a, um, some kind of a sports team, football, hockey, whatever, have a, they win their, their biggest award? Sometimes there's a parade for that. What about when there's like a famous person, a, a president or a movie star or something like that? Sometimes people line up to see them. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? Lots of reasons to have a parade. Well, let's think about it. So when they come, what are, what are they riding in? Let's see, like Santa, the Christmas one, he comes in a sleigh. A sleigh. His, they put a sleigh like on a, a float. Yeah. And then for Fourth of July, let's see, maybe people decorate their golf carts or their bicycles. So that's kind of cool. Or like when we're talking about the sports team, they always have those convertibles and the teams up there and everybody's waving the team flags. Yeah. Yeah. Or, okay, so what about the famous person we're talking about? They usually come in some kind of big, black, expensive car. And they have the motorcycles all. Yes, he was. And they, the motorcycles lined to protect him and make sure he's okay. So, talking about parades, what do you think about the Bible? Are there parades in the Bible? No. Ooh, let's think about that. I think there was a parade in the Bible. In fact, we just kind of had one this morning. Yes. Yep. It was a big celebration when Jesus went back to Jerusalem, and all the people who had heard about him or seen him doing miracles, they wanted to celebrate because he's coming to town. Now, they hadn't invented balloons or noisemakers or anything like that, so they grabbed the palm branches, right? You guys had palm branches this morning? Look this way, kids. So they had the palm branches. And the other thing that they did for honor was they laid down their coats and their robes and put them on the, on the um, street for Jesus to come on. Now, here's my next thing. We talked about the big black fancy car or the sleigh or the golf cart. What did Jesus ride in on? Right. Jesus came in one of the lowliest, most humble creatures that God made. And he, yes, honey? Yes, exactly. So here we have Jesus coming into town on a donkey. And everybody's waving the palm branches. And everybody's laying the coast down. And what was it they were saying? Remember? Hosanna. Everybody's waving their branches going, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So it was really a very good celebration that day because they were so happy. 
So the palm branch is one of the symbols of Easter, but there's another one I want to talk about. There's an, it's about a creature. Anybody know of another? A, a lamb, but not for Easter. All right, ready? Let me see what's in the bag. Let me see what's in the bag. That's not a chicken. A rooster. Thank you. A rooster. Now, how in the world is a rooster a symbol of Easter? Are right, you big kids? Think about it. Jonah, you know? Okay. Here's the thing. The rooster is a symbol of betrayal. Yes, he's a symbol of betrayal because you promise to stick to Jesus no matter what, and then you chicken out just because it gets a little tougher, a little hard. So that's what happened. You want to know something cool? Jesus already knew it was coming. He had already told his disciples, he says, one of you guys are going to betray me. And they were like, no, 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 we won't. But he knew. He knew someone was going to betray him. But, and he said, and when that happens, the rooster's going to crow three times. Cock-a-doodle-doo, 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 three times. So guess what? Later on, after all of those celebrations and happy times, the people got a little angry, and they forgot, and they did that very thing. Someone came up to Peter and said, hey, aren't you one of Jesus' um, disciples? And, and he right away said, no, no, I don't know that man. And what happened? The rooster crowed three times, cock a doodle doo cock a doodle doo doo Right. So we have our two symbols you're going to sit down. We have our two symbols, but we have to remember, even when times get hard, we can't betray him. But do you think that happens to us sometimes? What should we do? Should we praise God and celebrate his coming or betray him? You're sit down, sweetie. Or by keeping your promises? Guess what? We can do both. All of us, all the time, it happens to us when we don't mean to. We might accidentally do that. So it happens. So what we're going to do now, we're going to... Um, had some audience participation, all right? So I'm going to need everybody out there to help me too because, all right, here you go. You guys want to pass those out for you guys? All right, now everybody out in the audience, everybody got one? Pass one to Charlie. So this half, you, you can just stay sitting. Yeah, give one to Charlie. Okay. You want a little one, Charlie? Okay. So, everybody got one? All right, pass the rest back. So what we're going to do, this half, you're going to say Hosanna, and you kids are going to wave your palm branches and wave Hosanna, okay? You got one? All right, now I need you guys. I need you. You're not going to want to do this, but I need you. You're going to be the roosters, and you're just going to go cock a doodle do three times, and I want to hear you do it good. All right? You ready? One, two, three, go. Wave branches. cock a doodle do cock a doodle do cock a doodle doo Y'all supposed to be saying Hosanna. Cock a doodle doo Hosanna. All right, freeze. Very good. Everybody, palm branches down. Good job. Thank you for participating in that. Okay, palm branches down. We're going to say our prayer now. Down. Okay. Ready for our prayer? Shh. Raise. All right. Dear Lord, we humans are ordinary and odd people. On one hand, we celebrate you and praise you, and then we often turn around and betray you. Lord, forgive us and help us do better and in your name. Amen. All right. And I think Karen's going to pass out words, searches. You can keep those pom-poms if you want. If not, just plop them in a pile. As we just right there. find our way back to our seats, there you go. Take that with you. let us stand as we sing hymn number 299.
Please be seated uh, for the reading of the Passion Narrative. Our readers, I invite you to come take uh, your seats up uh, at my right-hand side, uh, and we shall begin the instructions for you as congregation you will find in your bulletins this morning. But essentially, I'm letting Linda Perry preach for me this morning, so <laughs> thank you, Linda. You're going to get tired of hearing my voice. <laughs> <clears throat> they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep away. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this step from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one that I will kiss is the man. Arrest him, and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth, they caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You are also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you're talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. 
Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you must be one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during their insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of his purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of, of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha. which means a place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what else should, each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemme sabachthani. Which means, My God, my God, who have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. 
Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. You may be seated.
Please join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. continues this morning.
find your way back to your seats this morning. Let us unite our, our hearts and our minds, trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things. Let us now pray for the church and the well-being of all of creation and certainly for a world much in need. O oh, blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. So we pray this day you prepare us to bear witness to all of Christ's suffering, to the death of our Lord, and all that Jesus endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with the resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Renew, O oh God, your good creation, and protect, protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters and scientists, for arborists and those who enjoy the gardening season, and for the river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects and songbirds and the native plants that fill our spaces with beauty. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Establish then peace and justice among the nations. O God, we continue to bear heaviness in our hearts for all of those places in the world which suffer. For Haiti and the Dominican Republic right next door. And for those in the Ukraine and those in Israel, Palestine, especially. For also those in Papua New Guinea suffering after this cataclysmic earthquake. Hold to account any with authority to judge others, and grant that courts and legislatures and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O oh God. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken and those who feel forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. We pray, O oh Christ, that you reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated this day, for those who are institutionalized, those who are in foster care. We pray for all of them that they may know your abiding and enduring love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Give energy and joy this week to all bishops and pastors and deacons, worship leaders and church musicians. We pray this day you bless baptismal candidates, their sponsors, and those who are undergoing the course of confirmation study. We pray for those who teach them and are preparing them for baptism or confirmations. Watch over all those who will be traveling for this holiday week. Hear us, O oh God. <coughs> Blessed one, our times are in your hands. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives, that they may be received unto everlasting life. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, O God of grace now, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ our Savior, and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, for you are the creator of heaven and of earth. Your steadfast love endures forever, and you have made this day and given it to us. You have given us aid in times of trouble, and you help us and sustain us, even when there is none who will declare us guilty because of what you have done for us. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with you a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of humanity. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death upon the cross. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick and fed the hungry and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. And he gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat from this, all of you, for this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer now ourselves in both praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, renewed by his blood, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until he comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen and amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one loaf, and the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ, and the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the blood of Christ. In the United Methodist Church, please do know that our table is open to all persons. We welcome you to come and share these gifts of God for the church this day. Uh, We ask that uh, you certainly uh, give time for any of our musicians uh, to come forward and partake first so that we can have music during communion. And also, if you need to scoot out to the fellowship hall as you are maybe a kitchen helper, uh, we want you to join in and receive first this morning. I will ask any of my altar servers to help uh, this morning. We, we welcome you to come, come on up and, and come, uh, come help us this morning.
Shall we pray? Eternal God, we give thanks to you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Give us then the courage never to betray or deny Jesus, but always to confess him with a steadfast heart. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give of ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we all pray. Amen. May we stand for the final song. God bless you and keep you and shower you with mercy and fill you with courage and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in peace and share your bread. Thanks be to God. <laughs>